at the 30. He's at the 38-yard line. First down and 10 yards to go for LSU. And the tackle is made by the kicker, Terry Sanders. Gary James, bandaged right hand. And he goes a total of about 23 yards. And it was awful close, John, to going all the way on that one. Here's the offensive line for LSU. Anchored in the middle by Tommy Campbell. Wickersham, the quarterback, number five. He has a single setback who's Dalton Hilliard. Wickersham to throw. He's got a man open. It's Martin for a first down. And the ball is at the Alabama 47-yard line. First down and 10 yards to go. LSU and Alabama territory. Bama is starting the following men on defense, led by big John Hand, number 78. About 6'7", about 270. Cornelius Bennett, number 97, is in there. Been injured a lot this year, but he's playing. And there are the defensive backs for Alabama. First and 10, the Tigers at the Bama 47-yard line. And here's a fake and a run that is uh, going to be marked to the 30, the 20, and down to just outside the 15-yard line. A quick fake and a fine play. It certainly was, John. And what LSU has done, it's a little bit different. They've come out with two tight ends, Doug. What that does is it doesn't allow Alabama to declare their defense. All this is is just a quick slant fake to Dalton Hilliard up the middle, which brings the weak side linebacker over there inside tough. Eric Martin's able to avoid the outside cornerback that's playing outside technique and does a fine job running with the ball after he catches it. First down, the Tigers at the 16. There goes Hilliard on a draw to the 10, to the 9, and the Tigers foul up the Alabama defense, and here's Hilliard going for his first big gain of the day. John, LSU's really started out fast. They went back to their standard basic formation that time with a single setback and a wing back and handed the ball off to Hilliard up in the middle on a draw play. He would have scored if he hadn't run into John Harrell and another Tiger blocker downfield. LSU still in excellent position. Second down with short yardage. Hilliard had 977 yards going into the game. He has it again. He's at the six. Bump down hard at the six yard line. That's Joe Godwin who makes the tackle for Alabama. Tigers are playing in those familiar white jerseys and having a good time in this game so far. And a word about the artificial turf. In our visit there a minute ago uh, at the start of the game, uh, the situation had not been bothered at all by the, uh, the wet weather because uh, this is a new turf and the water had been accommodated very effectively. Wing back formation, that's Herman Fontenot out to the right. Gary James plows to the four yard line. The Tigers turn on big power on third down and one. First down and goal to go. John, that was very important for LSU. Throughout the year, LSU has gotten the ball, moved it well in the middle of the field, and been unable to get points on the board, either because of inability to score the touchdown or missing of the field goal. LSU initially takes the ball here, drives deep into Bama territory, and on a very important third down situation, runs a straight power play over the right side to Gary James. First down inside of the five. Wing back, formation against the seven-man line. Hilliard on a little counter. Bobbled the ball, it seemed, for a second, but he's two and a half yards away from the goal line. He's stopped by Paul Tripoli, strong safety, number 23, and others. But you've got to say, at this stage of the game, Coach Arnsbarger has to be happy because his offensive line is getting movement in that Alabama defensive line, and that gives Dalton Hilliard an opportunity to pick a hole and to make a cut. Yeah, that movement by Alabama's defensive line is at an odd time, too. Wickersham throwing, touchdown to Fontenot. LSU leads six to nothing. That is a sizable drive. Excellent play, quick drive, jumping on him real quick, Jeff, finishing off with Herman Fontenot catching the touchdown pass. But that was a fine drive put together from the clipboard back during the first part of the week. They saw that, as you watch Jeff here, they come out with a quick snap, which doesn't allow Alabama to get too set and ready for the play and Herman comes out of the backfield and just gets wide open in the flat. 62 yard drive as the Tigers just roll down the field and Ronald Lewis will try the point after at the south end. Clay Parker is the holder. There's Lewis. The freshman boots it between the uprights and there's a timeout on the field. The score is LSU 7, Alabama nothing.
very impressive drive LSU just put together, and it happened so quick. There's still 12-12 left on the clock, and LSU just picked the ball up, marched with two tight ends on two key plays, went down the field, then they were able to pick up the short yards when they needed to do it, just as you said, and then they moved it on in for the score. Fine drive, fine position, good feeling right now for LSU. And good coverage here would really set the Tigers up in great defensive position. Matt DeFrank kicks the ball down to about the seven-yard line. And here is the return far out to the right side. Alabama's Cedric Vaughn runs that ball out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Good return for Bama. Now we'll see what the Tide can do with the ball, Bert. They will. And going down on that kickoff, you didn't see that familiar seven as you look at Alabama's offensive line. Steve Rehaj is injured and uh, possibly may not play the rest of the year, Doug. I heard. Here's the Bama offensive line. And it's the backfield here led by Paul Ocaruth and Mike Shula, left-handed quarterback from the 25. Bama territory, the tied down, 0-7. to seven. And there is a tackle by Dubrock. And a run to the right side by Ricky Moore, who has 700, uh, 237 yards into this game on 72 carries. Not the productive season he had a year ago. And this LSU defense is really going to be tested. They've had a lot of movement in that defensive line. John Hazard, who's been out all week, is back as a starter. And the secondary is going to be called upon to make awful big plays in the passing game today. Second and eight, Bam at its 27. Long count by Shula, left-handed thrower, rifles one for the first down at the 36-yard line. That's Richardson, tackled over there by number 12, Jefferson. And Mike Shula's an awful smart quarterback, and if he sees Norman Jefferson hanging off the wide receiver as far as he was, six, seven, and eight yards, he'll sit there and do that all day long. And I'll tell you, Norman Jefferson is limping after this play. He apparently suffered some type of injury. Mike Shula with just a quick strike to the outside. Jefferson comes up with the hit. There you see his right leg caught up under the stack, and he's limping. Ricky Moore travels right and slips as he makes his cut, picks up about a yard. Alabama's rushing offense has been good for 164 yards per game so far this year in compiling a 3-5 and five record, 1-3 and three in the conference and 126 yards in the air, making 290. By contrast, LSU has been allowing only 129 yards on the ground and 203 in the air. LSU's record is 6-1-1 one and, one and unbeaten, but tied by Florida in the conference. And of course, you know about the story, Florida uh, downing Georgia. Here is a long pass down here to Richardson. Bobbles it, but catches it at the 50-yard line. And again, he got in between Jefferson and Ricky Chapman, who somehow was back deep there. And uh, that was pretty well set up by Alabama. John, I'll tell you, this is awful tough for LSU to cover the way the secondary was lined up that time. Ricky Chapman is to the left in this picture. He is covering the tight end one-on-one, -on -one, and Jefferson is out there on the corner all by himself. There is not a safety anywhere near closer than the far hash mark on the right. I think LSU just lined up or misaligned because certainly I don't know that they want to stay in that situation. First and 10 at the 50-yard line. In motion, Whitehurst back toward the play and a draw to Ruth. Digs for short yardage. Looks like the ball's on the ground. Yeah, it does that. LSU has it, but I think probably possession remains with Alabama. One of the LSU players apparently is shaking up some. He's still on his knees over there on the right. We'll check out to see which person that is. It's just a straight draw. An interesting thing LSU coaches pointed out to me is that watch Mike Shula and Sutton if they happen, if he happens to get in the game. Anytime that he backs straight out with the ball, he's going to run a draw play, Doug. And it's something that really should be pointed out. I hate to do it now, but of course they won't know it on the field. That's Osborne, by the way, who's uh, hurt a hand, apparently. I think it's in the shoulder, it looks like to me. But when they do back out, it's almost an immediate tip that it is going to be a draw. And as you saw the linebackers jump up on the play real quick on that play, they felt that it's a pretty legitimate tip that they have, and they just went for it. And I think they did a legitimate job, and they caused the fumble. The officials just missed the call. Carruth dropped the ball while he was still alive, kicking, fighting. The ball scrambled over to the near the sideline. LSU made the recovery. The official felt that the play had been blown dead and retain Alabama retains possession. So it turned out to be a, a pretty good gain for Carruth on the play. Let's go back to Osborne. He has walked off the field. That's the Alabama huddle, of course. The Shula looks back toward the, the referee. And uh, Osborne's injury 
may be pretty serious to his right shoulder as the Tigers defensive forward wall is being decimated this year. First down and about three from the LSU 43 Alabama with the ball and there's Peru. First down over offensive right guard. He's piled up at about the 37 yard line and hit by Jeffrey Dale and Sean Burks. First down the tide at the LSU 38 they say. John, it's really miraculous how all of these Alabama players who all week long have been out of this contest definitely all of a sudden have recovered this morning. Paul Ott Carruth, who was not expected to play here, he's starting and, and running very well. Ricky Moore, Cornelius Bennett. All of these players at the beginning of the week couldn't walk, could they do it? <laughs> they weren't alive. There is Shula, long pass down the way, going to be incomplete to the end zone and tried for Clay Whitehurst, number 82, who was pretty effectively covered by Norma Jefferson. Well, Norma's been playing so far back, John, that I don't see how or even why they attempted to get past him because he's been laying off. Watch Mike here. Left-handed quarterback comes out the opposite way, which means he has the back to the receivers on the right side, which means he really doesn't have a good look coming back. But Norman has been so far back, so far off the receivers, they've already hit him twice underneath. I guess they were just anticipating that on the third one he might come up, but and not that time. He was back again. I expect, too, that uh, Jefferson is giving the receivers a little more room because of having been burned a couple of times earlier this year. There goes Carruth. Hit by Sean Burks to start with, and Tommy Clapp, and then Carl Wilson. And I think uh, Lifford Pobley got a little action on there. And let's give some credit also to Norman Jefferson because he's the fellow who really made the defensive play get started. He came up and took on that lead block and turned the play back inside and took the blocker out, causing Carruth to his timing first to be uh, changed from what he wanted it to be, but also allowing the inside pursuit time to come over there and make a great play. Carruth from Macomb, Mississippi, or Summit, Mississippi, actually, has lost a yard. It's third and 11 at the LSU 39. One set back, Ricky Moore. Shula throwing west. He hits Greg Payne. That's going to be a first down, I think, around the LSU 27-yard line. Mm -hmm. Let's look at that one again and see how it was he was open at the time. John on this one, Mike's backing out, just coming back. LSU's doing a few different things. Of course, Bill Onsberger grew up with Mike Shula because Mike was around the field all the time when he was coaching with Miami, and he's moving the defenses around a lot. In other words, they're not lining up in the position that they're going to end up in, and that can be to your advantage or, or against you sometimes because sometimes you're out of position as they were on that last play. Kevin Gidry made the tackle, pitch out to Ricky Moore, open, and he is inside the 20 to the 17. That's a 10-yard burst. The Tigers were flying to the outside defensively, and Moore just cut back inside the containment. He's finally hit hard and head on by Lifford Hobley. And, John, here's you see an example of what Burt was talking about. LSU has both safeties on the left side here, and so once Moore gets turned up, Lifford Hobley is having to come all the way over from the left side. He then fights and, and finally is able to hang on to Moore, but as strong as Moore is, once he gets in that secondary, he's tough to bring down. Let's give some credit to Sean Burks on that tackle, too. First down at the LSU 17. Alabama behind Shula going, and Moore tries the middle. Missed by Wilson on the way through, but slowed effectively by him, and so the yardage gained amounts to only about two or three. Make it four to the LSU 13-yard line. And men, I'll tell you, it's a pretty good sign of things for Alabama the way it looks now. Their offense has hurt them the entire season. Their defense pretty much has kept them in the games that they've been in. But here their offense has taken the kickoff and marked down the field. Mike Shula throwing the ball very well and the entire offense executing well. George Enriquez, number 91, is at nose guard now for LSU. And here is a long count and a pitch out to Carruth. He's coming to the 10. Bottled up by Burks. And that play was forced by number 44, Greg Dubrock, I think. At least some help on it. Carruth had 606 yards coming into this game that is running the ball. He's also the team's leading receiver. This was just a quick pitch around the outside, something that LSU's defense has been subject to against because it's the old student body right and left, John. They, a lot of teams have had some success against them with that. 
but that time we were pretty fortunate in holding them up in less than first down. It's third down and two at the LSU 10, 65 yards so far on the drive, and Karuf comes left to the five, first down. George Enriquez on the tackle, but again, the tackle is made five yards downfield. Alabama doing an excellent job of taking LSU away from the line of scrimmage. Again, this is a pitch out of the I formation. Carew sees the seam, cuts in, and Enriquez has to come from the middle guard position, but he's five or six yards downfield before he can get in on the tackle. First down, just a couple of inches shy of five yards to go. At the LSU five, Alabama with the ball and down by seven. Early in the game, here's Moore to the two. The Tigers are bending a little bit as Chapman makes the stop. Can't bend too much more than they are right now either, John. They're, they're going to break in about a yard and a half. <laughs> Alabama's really marched it well and. They're just trying to, to move LSU off the line of scrimmage and basically are running plays between the tackles and making good yardage doing. Second down, goal to go at the LSU 2 at the north end. In motion, the tight end, Ed Pugh, number 83, and here's Ricky Moore for a touchdown. It's 7-6. to six. The Tigers' lead is now 1. That's a 75-yard drive. It's just an off-tackle play, as Doug has been saying all along. They're just playing tackle-to-tackle -tackle football. Moore gets it up there with a good hold. Walks in standing up. And I'll tell you one thing that was interesting on that play. Wes Neighbors, the center, pulled and led that play between left guard and tackle and got a, an excellent block downfield, although downfield wasn't very far. But when you have a center with that mobility, you can do that. Van Tiffen tries the point after. He's not missed one in two years. It's more of the same, and we have a tie game with 448 to play in the first quarter here at Birmingham. Big crowd watching the game here today on a bleak afternoon, now and watch, here's the touchdown play. Here's number 54, Wes Neighbors, who pulls after the snap, and he was able to get a small piece of Norman Jefferson to open it up for more, making a touchdown. Time out of the game. The score is LSU 7, Alabama 7. Clarence Osborne, the defensive down lineman for LSU, went out of the ball game. He has an injured shoulder. His pads have been removed. He will not return. Ricky Moore on the other side of the field for Alabama with that bad finger left the game but came right back, scored the touchdown, so he apparently is okay. Now back up to the booth. That's Dick Walcott, and here is Gary James to the 30-yard line on the return of Tiffin's kick, and he's hit by Ricky Thomas there. Well, the action is picking up, gentlemen. It certainly is, John. Two fine offensive drives, two fine offensive performances up to this point. Uh, over 10 minutes out of this period, and it's just been two possessions of the ball. LSU 62 yards, and you see Alabama 75. Nothing like a good offensive drive, and now LSU needs one more. That's Jeff Wickersham, number five, Merritt Island, Florida. And he will throw. Open. Intended for Martin and complete and broken up by Wayne Davis, who, as it turned out, had a chance at an interception. But Wickersham had some mustard on the ball. The lights have been on since the start of the game here at Legion Field in Birmingham. The crowd is upwards of 75,000. We'll get an accurate count later. To the right here as Wickersham is close in are Martin and Fontenot, and a swing pass out to Hilliard. Here he comes. He's at the 30, no game. Davis chases him down and is ecstatic at his own sagacity. And Wayne Davis over again on the tackle. Here you can see Craig Ratchin from the right wing is blocking down Wickersham with a quick 
pass out to Hilliard. They're just trying to get him in the open field, but there's just no open field out here. Alabama with three people on one, and Dalton's not very big to start with. So that's that's not uh, much of a way to make yardage on that play. Fine defensive play by the Crimson Tide. Linebacker Wayne Davis really had that one figured out. Very smart. Third down and ten. Ricochet to the air again. He'll have to hurry. Incomplete. Emmanuel King was the man who caused that one and got uh, Wickersham off stride and the pass was blocked at the line. The nose guard Kurt Jarvis was trying to get in tight here and the Tigers had Campbell on him and had the left guard Kurt Gore on him and still Wickersham had problems behind him. Fourth down the Tigers are at their 30. No gain on the possession. Alabama likes to try to block. Richardson is up the field. Alabama has 10 men on the defensive line. Parker will have to hurry. He has the ball, and they do hurry him. And a very nice kick. Fair catch signal by Greg Richardson at his 19-yard line. Timeout of the game on the ball exchange, and the score is tied at 7-7. Turn of Parker's 51 yard kick. First down, Bama at its 19. <coughs> Moore. Two yards. Good surge by Alabama's line, but uh, the Tiger defensive wall was ready for that whole action. Sean Burks was there to make first contact. That's Ricky Moore, number 26. That's West Neighbors, number 50. 86, you saw, was the tight end, Preston Gothard. Mike Shula looks just like his father and a whole lot like his brother Dave Shula that I played with in Baltimore. Second down seven. Shula again to the sidelines. Complete to Whitehurst at the 30. First down. And he's at the 33. Spun down by Michael Brooks and company. John, I'll tell you, Mike Shula looks an awful lot different than he did earlier in the season. People raved about what a great high school quarterback he had been. Very highly recruited and both he and Vince Sutton chose to come to Alabama and they do different things well. Mike Shula is an excellent short passer and has developed into a pinpoint passer here early in, the, in his college career. Alabama with the ball in a tie game 7-7. Bama at its 33 yard line. Wide side of the field of the tides right. They go to the short side throw intercepted at the 45. Jefferson with the ball rolls it back to the tide 29 yard line quick like a shot and that is a 16 yard return of a pass interception. And he had the pinpoint on that one, but right to Norman Jefferson. How quick it can turn around here. You watch Mike Shula to his best side, the left side, because he's left-handed. He just gets the ball a little bit behind Whitehurst there, and Norman Jefferson reads it. He saw the ball because he was looking straight at him. The ball just slipped away, and I guarantee you Mike Shula had wish he'd let that one back. First down, the Tigers at the Tides, 29-yard line. And the flag. I'm not sure why. Maybe a legal procedure here. Jimmy Harper is the referee today, and here comes a signal legal procedure against LSU. Well, that's not what Coach Arnsparger is looking for right there. Certainly sure. isn't. Uh, last couple of weeks, LSU has not been able to capitalize on the breaks that they've had, such as this one, and I think they were working on it because they had a special formation, and it looked like a special play coming up because they had the tight end moving on the other side of the ball. As you look at Jimmy Harper right there on the head, he's the one that's pointed it out that that was an illegal shift. And because of it, looks like they're going to come back with it again, though. First down at 15. There goes Dalton Hilliard crashing into the left side. Short yardage to the 32-yard line. <laughs> Every time Craig Rathen comes in motion on that, you just almost know what he's going to do. LSU's been very effective with that motion play with Rathen coming in and blocking either the nose tackle or the defensive end, almost turning out to be like a pulling guard on a trap. And I know that sometimes he probably feels like he is a pulling guard, even though he's playing fullback. Second and 13 at the Bama 32. Now they're shifting, and this time it's okay. Remaining back is Hilliard. Wickersham to throw. Looking for James. Relief valve man. That's Hilliard to get the ball. Boy, do they crash it. That's John Hand who comes in to help Randy Rockwell. And 
Hilliard really takes a blow from behind at the line of scrimmage. No gain. And this was a play, John, that they were trying to get to on the first play of the series where Gary James was going upfield, anticipating just a straight zone where there's a weak safety in the middle of the field. This time they went with a double zone, which means they had two deep safeties and left him uncovered or not open, so to speak, like they anticipated. Big third down and 13 right here. Wickersham being chased as one of the to ground the ball and does. It's too late, and LSU will be penalized and will lose a down. Good pressure by the Alabama blitzing defense. And Wickersham. They were doing just that. It was a early. delayed blitz, John, something that you don't see a whole lot in college. What they do is the linebackers stand up as if they're dropping back to go into pass protection, and then they come because quite often you'll have backs on a block and if your linebacker does not come go out pattern and that's what happened on that play right there the back set up saw the linebacker pretending that he's going back into pass protection and as he left the backfield the linebacker came underneath and he was uncovered and no one was there to block him and jeff wickersham just had to almost eat the ball the tigers were not sharp in the series they lost 23 yards on the possession there's richardson standing back at the 12 as parker kicks to him he kicked one 51 yards earlier. Here's another nice one. Fair catch signal by Richardson at the eight. Woo. Time out of the game. The score is LSU seven, Alabama seven. First and ten at the Crimson Tide eight-yard line. That was a 44-yard kick, and on both Parker's kicks so far, there's been no return. Quick pitch out to Moore, out of bounds at the 13. He gets five. And the Tigers have out there Norman Jefferson, 12, and 57. There goes uh, Moore back to the huddle. Uh, Sean Burks is 57. Moore looks pretty healthy for me to uh, <laughs> have been so sick. Second down and five. Crimson tied it at 13. He is there, but I know LSU isn't feeling too healthy after missing a golden opportunity to score on that interception by Norman Jefferson, giving Alabama the ball back. Now it's second and five. Shula maybe checking off at the line, and here is a run over the middle to the 15-yard line. And Carruth, I think, is the man who had the ball there. Big lumbering fellow, 206 pounds at the 15-yard line. It'll be third down and about three. LSU's doing a couple of things differently, John, than they've done in the past. What they're doing is they're moving the weak safety and the strong safety almost over to the field side and leaving your weak corner in a very vulnerable position. They have a confidence in their cornerbacks and they're good enough players they feel like they can do this. But sometimes it can be very trying. LSU in a five-man line. Shula backing up, has a lot of time, shoots a pass that's incomplete. Intended for number 29, second unit flanker Billy Getchell. The Tide will have to punt with fourth down and three at the 15 yard line. Once again, you'll watch the safeties here. You can see the linebackers there in a semi man coverage where they drop back kind of in the zone. John Burke says, Hey, if you're going to get in my territory, you're going to pay the price. And he just hammers him after the ball goes on by. Wickersham grounded the ball a few moments ago. There was also a penalty of loss of the down. And we have a timeout called by Alabama with 23 seconds to go in the first quarter. Gentlemen, how do we stand here in a 7-7 game? Well, we stand 7-7, but once again, LSU missed a golden opportunity to score, having the ball first and 10 on the 30-yard line and actually losing yardage on it. Uh, they had a penalty coming out on a first down, which gives them first and 15. And boy, did I hate a first and 15, Doug. It just seems like you can never find a play that works too well on that because you're kind of out of position of being able to run the ball. And, and that takes a lot away from you. And you hate to force yourself into throwing the ball on the 30-yard line that soon coming out of the bat. You want to be able to establish a good run, pick a good play, and get a good first down call. And an interesting thing, LSU came out, Bert, at the very beginning of the game with two tight ends and a single back. And on two big plays, drove the ball deep into Alabama territory. Since that time, aside from one incomplete pass, they have not run the two tight ends. 
and it seems that they have had some problems running their basic offense. They've tried a couple of new wrinkles out of the normal one back set, but when they have two tight ends, it forces Alabama's defense to play more even up rather than overloading one side, and LSU's having difficulty on offense trying to do anything with that. Here's Terry Sanders with a 39-yard kicking average standing right at the goal line. Up the field, Jefferson, who would like to return one a long way. No big rush, and a nice kick. Jefferson receives at his 35. Looking for the wall. It's trying, but he won't get there. He's shy of the 40-yard line. We have a flag on the play, and that could be an LSU quip. And so Alabama could get a lot of mileage out of that kick. Well, they got a lot of mileage. It's a big turnaround for them, but LSU's defense did rise to the occasion and stopped Alabama on their second position of the game. It's a 50-yard kick. Jimmy Harper is going to listen to one of his assistants out there and we'll find out what the situation is. A clip is called against LSU, so this 50-yard punt is going to be augmented for Alabama a little bit. LSU will have a farther distance to go. They give you 15 yards on these. Tigers really need to get back into the flow offensively. They've made uh, a couple of changes. Eric Andelsek is, is in, in the offensive line. Tommy Campbell, of course, still there at center. Lance Smith at right tackle. But LSU's got to do something right now to keep the ball, let that defense stay out of the game and get a little rest, and force Alabama into trying some things on defense. You notice that Wickersham was four out of six, and he hands off here to uh, Hilliard. Alabama right now defensively is handling the offensive blocking in the LSU line as Hilliard takes it on the nose and he's back to the 22 yard line loses about two. Alabama plays with basically three down linemen four linebackers a 34 defense that you find very frequently in pro football as you see Ray Perkins came from the New York Jets. Second down, LSU at its 22-yard line, 12 to go, and here's a quick shot over here that's incomplete to Martin, and Wickersham threw a bad pass. He did that, and it was almost deja vu for Alabama, what Norman Jefferson had a little bit earlier for LSU. Jeff threw the ball a little bit high, a little bit behind him, and the quarterback do been doing what Norman Jefferson was doing on our play and watching the quarterback in the ball. He possibly could have had an interception, and there was nobody in front of him on that one. But fortunately for LSU, it just brings up third and 12 as opposed to six points the other way. The ball is wet, the field is slick, and it's hard to throw an artificial turf when the things are wet. Third and 12, Wickersham fades back again. Andrews receives at the 30-yard line, stopped by Billy Pierce, number 14. And it's shy of a Tiger first down, but it's fourth down and about three to go for a first down and Parker comes on. There's Jeff. Wickersham again out of the pocket. Jeff bought himself a lot of extra time by stepping to the right and stepping up but didn't see anybody downfield. Found Mitch Andrews over on the sideline but in a situation like that he's still five yards short of the first down. Uh, Jeff's going to want to look for somebody who's passed that marker. Point of the down the 29 yard line. Snap to Parker. Fine kick. He's having a great day so far. Richardson backs up to his 22. Retreats to the 21. He's in trouble. And way back down are Chris Carrier and also for LSU, Nicky Hazard, number 48. Here's Carrier, number 11. He's the deep snapper for LSU. And Parker is just having a fine day. So far, he's kicked 51 yards, 44, and 49, and there's been no return yardage. And he still is kicking without a shoe, John. You sure you wanted to put one on? I talked to him about that on the way over here. I, <laughs> he has a piece of tape strapped around his foot. <laughs> 14 minutes to go in the first half. 7-7 the score. And here's Alabama first down from its 19. That's Carruth. Little uh, sort of a semi-reverse there. 
It's a little delayed counterplay, John. You're right. It is a semi-reverse. It's almost like an old-time Statue of Liberty play. The only difference is, watch his back, coming back around. He starts that far, turns around, and Cruz from Mississippi comes around to the left side. Can be good because sometimes a little bit delayed hitter and people kind of get out of position, but that time LSU was right there to defend it. Second and seven, Bama at its 22. Here comes Caruth this side. He's bottled up, won't get anything. Tigers' Carl Wilson fouled that one up for Alabama, and the force on the situation was supplied by Jeffrey Dale. I'm advised, gentlemen, that at this stage, as it gets a little darker here, that we have a tornado warning out for the Birmingham area. So the weather is surely unsettled, and our game is unsettled because it's 7 7. Each team scored on its first possession at the start of the game. Since then, nothing really has happened. LSU had an opportunity, but failed to capitalize on it after an interception by Jefferson. Shula the throw. Moore at the 25, 26, down at about the 29. And it's going to be close to the first down. Sharon Sean Burks. And let's see, Toby Caston. Mike Shula just Michael backing Brooks. out here. He knows that he's got about a third and eight looking for a first down man. Ricky Moore, knowing how far the chains are, tries to get the ball upfield. And I'm not sure if he made it or not, but he had a very good effort trying to get there. Sean had uh, Moore by the, well, by the jersey, as you easily can tell. And the chain comes over from the other side, and let's see if Alabama has a first down. And I love the psychedelic chain they've got there. <laughs> not a first down. Lacks about a half yard. So here comes the Alabama kicking team. Alabama's been known to use fake punts in situations of this type, but maybe not at this point of the field. Well, in this type of game, Alabama has basically nothing to lose, Doug. I mean, they can do anything. They can pull the plugs anywhere, anytime, because the only thing they're fighting for is not to have a losing season. And I know Ray Perkins has that heavy on his mind. There's Jefferson. Not only that, but LSU, since the first series, has not moved an inch. So Alabama's playing good, solid defense. LSU was down in this territory a little while ago and got backed up 23 yards. Point of the down, the 29. Fourth down, and Sanders will kick it. Here it is on the way. Front of a line drive to Jefferson at the 25. Looking for room. It may be open. He's got it. He's, He's got at it. the 40. He's at the 45. He's in Bama territory and out of bounds. Pushed away by Sanders and Pierce inside the 45-yard line. It's Good return by Jefferson. There's some little things that make punt returns. Watch Jefferson make a fake to his left. That changes the direction of Alabama's coverage team and creates the scene that he was looking for. And then he picks up his blocks, sets up a couple of more blocks. Watch Mark Hall with an excellent job standing up and not making the clip instead of going to make the block. And then Jefferson milking it for all that he can. Time out in the game with a score, 7-7, the Tigers and the Tide. Back to play as Gary James runs around the right side to the Alabama 35-yard line from the point of the down, the 42, and Britton Cooper, number 20, makes the stop from free safety, and on the field comes number 21, Dalton Hilliard, just popping into the picture. Wickersham gets the play call from him. And a very important first down play, John. They picked up six yards, and any time you have a second and four, I know Bill Arnsberg is happy because that's a good position to be in as it starts to rain again. Wickersham throws. That's uh, Andrews complete for a first down at the 29. Davis pops him as soon as the ball gets into the mittens of the gentleman from Homa. But number 83, Mitch Andrews, has made the catch, and it's first down for LSU at the Tide, 29. Rathjen is on the field for LSU. It's a 7-7 game. Final score, Florida has beaten Georgia in the conference 27-0. That makes this a big, big game for LSU. The Tigers are the only other unbeaten team in the conference. Then Florida, that is. Gary James runs out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Pushed off the field by Cornelius Bennett, another one of those sick Alabama Crimson Tide players who just been so sick they couldn't practice. But he certainly is playing well, as he always does when he plays. LSU's coming in with a few more wrinkles. 
What they're doing is they're getting number 83, Mitch Andrews, moving from side to side as you see the motion back coming around, blocking for Gary James. That's Craig Rathjen again. Gary James is running better than he has in a couple of weeks. Back to play, second down and six. That's the Bama 25-yard line. Wickersham to throw. It's raining, and he hits out here. Hillier who popped immediately. Oh. And that's a hard hit by Vernon Wilkinson, right cornerback, the sophomore from Enterprise. And but some yardage is gained. And the ball is down at the Alabama 22-yard line. It's third down and three. And that does hurt. Hopefully, Dalton will have on one of those patented flak jackets because anytime you get hit in the ribs right there, when you're not expecting it, it hurts. Third and three, critical down. At the 22, Wickersham running, wants to throw, does, has a man open, that's Martin. Oh, the ball at the two-yard line. Oh, my goodness. That was a sure six. And Wickersham had the ball at the hands, and Martin, who has the great hands, just gets his fingers in the way of the catch. And this is a good play by Jeff Wickersham. He comes back to the backside. He lays the ball out perfectly. Eric Martin, who has not scored a touchdown this season, is wide open, has the opportunity to make the sure catch, looks away before he makes sure that he has it. Ronald Lewis will try a 40-yard field goal at the north end. It's on the way. It is good. And so the Tigers of LSU take a 10 to 7 lead with 10 minutes and 12 seconds to go in the first half. And we're taking a timeout now with the Tigers ahead by three. just made that field goal and oh what a game he had last week Doug huh well he stepped in in a pressure situation made two field goals two extra points and the pressure was on him the whole time and it's not as if the pressure were not on him here this afternoon <laughs> well, immediately after Eric Martin drops a sure touchdown pass Ron Lewis comes in it's raining the field is kind of slippery and that becomes treacherous for, for soccer, soccer kickers. kickers it's much easier for them on artificial turf than natural turf when it's wet but it's difficult for anyone who comes in at that angle Ron Lewis so Bangs through the 40 yard to put LSU ahead 10 to 7. Braggs and Allen are down deep, and uh, another man for Alabama, number 88, Cedric Bonds, <laughs> as the ball comes off the tee. And Matt DeFrank, who is the kickoff man for LSU, resets the ball in the tee, and that's number 90, Darren Marlboro, standing beside it, sort of to protect it, I guess. Bonds is standing at the goal line, the left of the picture there, and here's another shot of it. Here comes the ball. To the end zone. He can really kick him. From one yard deep, Bonds comes out. Oh! To the 15 yard line, and a very good tackle by DeWitt. First down and 10 to go for Alabama as the rain really does fall out of the sky and torrents. And that's the quarterback down there on the kickoff team. You know, Mike DeWitt was the. He, he got that training from Burt Jones. Burt used to like to go down and lead on the kickoff teams and on the punt teams. And make I don't those remember lead that. Tackles. I don't I mean, remember used, it either. I think he, he got it from that. Bill Arsbarger because he had a quarterback in Miami last year. <laughs> their third string quarterback goes down on both kickoff and punt and was one of their leading tacklers on the special team. Shula and company from the Alabama 15. LSU leads by three, and Bama is offside. That is Gary Otten, the right tackle, 260-pounder. They never get on camera, John, until they make a mistake. And that's the type of thing that traditionally Alabama has not done. It's the type of thing traditionally LSU has not done. But here today, both teams are making those type of mistakes. And the last couple of years, that's the type of, of mistakes that have hurt both of these football teams. Alabama and running. Carruth, eight carries, 17 yards. Moore, eight carries, 30 yards. So LSU's defense has done pretty well with the Alabama running game. First down back at the 10 after the five-yard assessment. And that's uh, a run for the penalty yardage to get that back as Moore cut back against the grain. Now, the footing is very good. Uh, Dick Walcott, after a while, can tell us about the uh, what the players are saying about that coming off the field.
But uh, the steel does drain very well. There's a hump in the middle of it that's still turtle back, even though artificial turf. It's Second down at ten. It's a very high crown, yes, John. It it's almost 12, 14 inches, I think. And that has its advantages and disadvantages. It's hard for a quarterback to throw downhill continuously. Second down and 10 at the 15 yard line. Bama down by three as Shula has the ball on a draw. That's more good by Toby Caston on that contact. And he is full of himself, isn't he? <laughs> Number 69 for the Tigers. And so Alabama is going to face third down and about 12. And LSU's made some changes along that defensive line. George Enriquez in the middle. Here you see Sean Burks, 57, who steps up in the hole. And again, that's the same thing Bird was talking about. When Alabama tips off that draw, the linebacker steps up into you that see hole. Toby Kasson, he just came running from the snap when he saw him drop back. Third and 12 from the 13. Bama backed up very deeply. Shula to throw. Oh, could be. Interception almost there. And Jeffrey Dale, who has two already this year, just sort of overran that one that was just tipped out of his reach. And speaking out, that brings up a Bama fourth down. It does that. As you see Mike dropping back here, he just pulled the string on this ball. You know, Mike's a good passer, but sometimes if you try to catch the ball for the receiver instead of just throwing the ball, you end up in trouble. And he almost ended up in trouble there. He should have just thrown the ball like he knows how. Speaking of high crowns in the football field, you never played in a higher crown than the Sun Bowl. <laughs> Correct? Well, I can't remember that far back, John. I remember the game. You said it. <laughs> you know, I'm getting senile now. <laughs> I'm taking lessons from you. I know that. Uh, Lightning is um, getting close. the attention of a lot of our people. Real close. Terry Sanders is going to back up the punt as uh, Mr. Harper comes over to talk to the electric clock operator. I imagine that he would sort of like to have that wire out of his hand. <laughs> I'm sure he would also. There's but Sanders. as important... We pointed out that Alabama has been very effective except on that last drive stopping LSU. LSU stopped them since the first drive every time. Shut them down. High snap and Sanders gets the kick away and it's going to be up near midfield. Fair catch a signal for by Jeffrey Dale at the 50 yard line. And there is a 37 yard kick. And the field is getting slick. LSU is ahead by three and we take time out at Birmingham. Back to action at the 50 yard line. Wickersham hands off to Hilliard as he crawls ahead, straight ahead for short yardage. Brent Sowell, number 79, leads the tide. Tacklers on that action right there. LSU's been pretty effective. That play again with two tight ends, and they seem to run the ball better having the two tight ends in the game with the, with the one running back. Defensively, they've moved Enriquez into the middle. Tommy Clapp out to the left defensive end. John Hazard, who's been sick all week long, was not in the game on the last series, and they're backing those people off the ball a little bit. Wickersham, little shovel pass ahead to Hilliard, and he picks up about three on a second down and five play, and Cliff Thomas, number 99, makes contact with him, and John Hand is there, number 78. That's an interesting play there, John. That came back from the old shotgun. Used to call it Utah Fest. <laughs> well, I've never been to Utah, but they do it down here pretty well, too. <laughs> <laughs> right. The old shovel pass, because if you dropped it, it's just an incompleted pass as opposed to a fumble. And if you get a defensive end coming up the field, it can be very effective. The rain is very hard again as Ricochet goes back to throw, hits the short goal, the pass is blocked. Blocked by Brent Soule, number 79, or is that John Hand, number 78? It is uh, Hand. Now, this is a pretty good play by defensive lineman. Hand got blocked on the left side, saw that Wickersham was going to throw it, so he just stuck his hand up. He knew he had no chance of getting to the quarterback, so did the next best thing by getting his hand in the way of the ball. It would have been a completion in LSU first down, as it is the Tigers under threat of serious lightning, as uh, if you just saw that play having to punt the ball on fourth down from the Alabama 43. Parker will punt. Richardson is backed up to his 13. Parker bobbles the ball, kicks it. Oh, what a Just play. gets it away. It is going to the five-yard line. Is tipped into the oh. end zone and just barely gets into the end zone. But Parker bobbled the snap and just did get the kick away. He gets credit for 43 yards on the kick. 
Been but up. it was under some duress. He Bad made it play. exciting, too, didn't he? <laughs> the snap is high, but Clay Parker looks like he just took his eye off of it, but kept control. Very fortunate to get the ball away because Alabama had four people right around him, including the ill Cornelius Bennett. First down, Alabama has the ball at the 20 on the touchback. Over the ball is West Neighbors. He's the son of a former Bama All-America. And there goes Ricky Moore in trouble. Whew. Well, it was Jefferson who got him off stride and then Caston and Carl Wilson to make the big contact. But Michael Brooks is a player that made that play go yes, for LSU did. there. He fought off one blocker. He made the play string out, get wide, and anytime you can delay the corner that far, the defensive pursuits have come around. As you see, it's beginning to rain very hard here in Birmingham. Shula dropping. sets Bama in an eye and he runs with the ball and throws it out of bounds. Intended for Billy Getchell, number 29. So Bama is backed up in its own territory. Bama has really not been very efficient offensively since that first Alabama offensive series. LSU's just shut the tide down. That's true, and you saw an unnecessary injury there. When you have too many people around the field, that's one thing I always hated, including the change. You can get a lot of people hurt running out of bounds for no reason. Third and 12 from the 18. Remember, Moore lost a couple of yards two plays ago. And here is Shula back to throw. Look out. And he hits up there. And that's a completed ball pass to tight end. Fumble. Precious Robert is hit and fumbled at the Alabama 35 but he's going to be called down at the 37 or 8 yard line. It's still Alabama's ball. I know what Bill Arnsberg is hollering at right now. He had a lineman that must have been four or five yards downfield. Watch the left guard for a right guard for Alabama. You saw him leave the picture. He's running downfield and that's against the rules, John. You can't be downfield. He was faking the screen to the right side, but inadvertently he had gotten upfield far enough to make Bill pretty mad. Watch him. There he goes. He's leaving the film right now. It's almost like he's out of the picture. You see that five-yard stripe where he caught the ball. That's five yards, and the offensive guard was beyond that point. Bama First from its 37 now. First down. Shula to throw again. He's going to be hit. He gets out of the pocket. Flag, and Toby Castle gets the face mask. That'll be first down for Alabama with... I think probably only five yards maybe because it was not intentional because Kasman was just grabbing for anything he could get. Mike Shula coming around the corner there. Toby's just reaching, trying to get anything he can get. And he got a pretty good handle because those face masks always seem to be able to just hold any player back. He sure did. Toby didn't let go very quickly that time. Very fortunate that young Mike Shula is not injured because his helmet got turned almost all the way around. Good thing that his head inside of it didn't get all the way turned around. <laughs> Just shows you he doesn't have the big head because if he did, <laughs> his helmet would be a lot tighter than that. Well, Caston got 15, and Alabama comes from way down deep at its 20-yard line to the LSU 38 with a first down and 10 yards to go. 6.08 to go in the half. LSU leads 10 to 7. Shula has an eye with Moore and Caruth behind him. Caruth with the ball. To the 30. Good play. As he has an eight yard carry, Michael Brooks stops him and from Patterson. There's more. First down, Alabama at the LSU 22 yard line. Well, Bama has capitalized on the one big play and then got the 15 yard penalty, and so the tide is moving along pretty well to a first down at the LSU 22 yard line. This one right here, you just see the nose guard just move right out of your picture. It's almost as if they had a slant and they cut the end off from the slant. And anytime you have one player on the team moving one way, you have to move in sync because if you don't, you leave a hole four or five yards wide as Ricky Moore just ran straight through. The Tigers lead 10-7. That lead now is in jeopardy. Slot formation to the right, and that is Allen on a little counter. Stopped by Wilson at about the 14-yard line. Another good first down play of eight yards. And Bama's doing what is necessary to be done to sustain the long drives, and that's to make the good first down yardage. They have done that, and they've done it on the ground. 
a couple of times you'll see LSU's, or well you won't see, but they are playing a little bit different coverage, which deploys a weak side linebacker to the point that he doesn't have real good force technique. In other words, he has to be concerned about being way outside in coverage, and they were fortunate enough, Alabama, to hit that two times. There's uh, Doug Allen dumped at the line of scrimmage on a second down from the 15-yard line and three to go, and he picks up about a yard. And Let's LSU see. pretty much down here, John, has got to gamble some with Alabama, hoping the tide will keep the ball on the ground. You saw the wind a few seconds ago. That wind is blowing in Mike Shula's face, and it's going to be very difficult, although he is in the stadium and at ground level, it would not have that much effect. He's throwing into the wind. It's hurt him on a couple of passes that have gotten away from him, and I think the tide would prefer to stay on the ground, so it's just jawbone to jawbone down at this part of the field. Toby Caston made that last head-on tackle, and we have timeout called by the Tigers with 3.42 to go in the first half. Good long drive in progress by Alabama, and the Tigers want to talk things over as you look at Shula on the sideline. The Tigers lead by three. down and one yard to go third and one at the 13 yard line Alabama with the ball and Moore oh. trying to get the first down I don't think he made it if he did make it it was just by the hair on his chinny chin chin but as they unravel we're going to talk carefully about this one I think and let's see what Bama will do on a fourth down and a yard to go fourth and one for Alabama at the LSU 13 Will Tiffin come in? And apparently Tiffin will come in. He's 11 out of 14 this year in field goals. And John, I'll tell you, this is a short kick. However, with the wind and the rain, it is a tough kick because Van Tiffin is kicking right into it, and he does get the ball up high. And Alabama is going to call for time. I'm not sure why, but Alabama is going to look at the situation and give Tiffin some time to talk about it. LSU was notably mo more efficient on that third down play with the defensive line. They've, they've switched people around and tried to find a good unit. And Carl Wilson, at least in this game, is being much more effective at the right side. George Enriquez is more effective in this game than Tommy Clapp in the middle. And Tommy Clapp plays very well on the left side. So the, although they put Mark Hall in there and moved some other people around, they've had the most effect with that group. As we look at the rain, the real action is out on the field because Tiffin has gone to the sidelines and Alabama apparently is going for the first down with fourth down and one. There's Ray Perkins telling uh, Mike Shula, and here comes Mike on the field. And that's reaching for straws. If you make up your mind once and then change it midstream, that shows indecision on the coach's part. And let's see if they get this fourth down because if he doesn't, it could be monumental for Ray Perkins. Fourth down and one at the LSU 13-yard line. Bama going for the first down. Gets the first down, I think, around the 11-yard line. He didn't get much more than the first down, but he got the crucial yardage. And apparently it's going to be first down, and, <laughs> and here comes the chain. First down, Alabama.
And John, only a quarterback would notice, but you notice the tone change in the football. That means that all the footballs are soaked. It means the footballs weigh a little bit more than what they did in the, before the game. It means the football is going to be a little slipperier than what it is normally, and it means that it can come or go. Who knows which way it'll help. 11 and a half yards away from the Tiger goal line. Alabama has first down and 10. Shula to Ricky Moore. Caston has hit him at the nine. And Lifford Hobby did a fine job coming up from his weak safety position, making a hit within one to two yards of the line of scrimmage. Just a quick pitch to the weak side. You see the lead blocker coming through. Caston right there, Hobley to finish it up. Fine defensive play by LSU. The ball for Alabama is positioned at the LSU nine yard line. The Tigers of LSU hold a very precarious three-point lead, 10 to 7, late in the second quarter. There's a draw again. There's that draw play, and the roof breaks down to about the four-yard line. Half-back draw. Ball out Carruth is down at the four-yard line. And watch West Neighbors in the middle. He gets a double team with the right guard. Carruth had a good opening, and he tripped on one of his linemen and lost his footing momentarily. It allowed LSU to come up and uh, make the tackle. I think he might have gotten to the end zone if he had not made that slip. Jeffrey Dale was one of those on the stop. Bama is now at the LSU four, maybe the three-and-a-half-yard line, has two yards to go to get a first down. But more importantly, the tide is inside the Tiger five. And here's the run by Carruth. He know a pass to the end zone is touchdown. And that is to the tight end, Ed Hughes. So Alabama pulls a page out of the LSU book as Carruth made the great fake away from us. And Shula running to the left, hides the ball and hits Q in the end zone for a touchdown. Bama has the lead. Gutsy call, good ball handling by Mike Shula there. Took lessons from his father. Makes it over the middle, finds the man open, and thank goodness for college football and one foot in for touchdown because had it not, it wouldn't have made it. 13 to 10, Alabama has a three-point lead. Van Tiffin will be trying the point after. Holding Larry Abney. Alabama now has a four-point lead as Tiffin's kick is very, very good. Here's another angle on that touchdown play. Mike Shula losing the handle. The reason the fake was so effective is because he wasn't holding the ball <laughs> when Carruth went past him. And he gets back, but he finds the handle on it quick enough to hit him for the touch, Doug. And so with 107 to go in the first half, Alabama has taken the lead. 14 to 10, and Bama will be kicking off. And Ray Perkins' decision turned out to be a good one, didn't it? You know, when you, when you make that decision, oftentimes you'll make that next first down, but then the next play you'll fumble or get an interception. <laughs> and people say, well, if you'd only kick the field goal, and Alabama had to score the touchdown, but they did so. It made Perkins' decision a good one and puts LSU in the hole. Uh, really, although the Tigers have the win, certainly Alabama has taken back the momentum that LSU had earlier. The Tigers expecting an onside kick from the Crimson Tide. I don't know that that would be coming, but LSU certainly aware of it. They must have a tip that we don't, Doug. Well, they've got the ball laying flat on the field, but I don't know that he's going to try to onside it. And that ball bounces back to the 15-yard line is picked up there by Martin. Here he comes up to the 40-yard line almost. And the tackle by Bama's Sean Lee. Sammy Martin. Running back number 23 on that kick received team for LSU. And now the Tigers have the ball at their 39. Down by four. Wickersham hands the ball off. And here's a run up to near midfield over the right side by Dalton Hilliard. A good first down, good first down play in a two-minute situation. Everyone thinks you have to throw the ball, but if you can hand off, it only took 15 seconds thus far, get a good play, second and one, and here they come out again in good field position. Second and one, here's the pass down the way. That's to Martin. And he drops it again. Drops it again right on his hands at the 35-yard line. Oh, my goodness, one of the sure-handedest players in LSU's history. You've seen him drop two balls a day, something you haven't seen in probably his whole career. Jeff sits up, 
throws the ball, delivers, fine. Ball might have been tipped there, but still, the ball was right there in his chest. As you see, his concentration following it all the way to the ground and almost makes the catch. But Eric doesn't drop a ball too often, and he's dropped two today. Third down and one. LSU now must go for the first down with 33 seconds to go in the half, and here is Wickersham to throw. Swing pass out there, and that's Hilliard. And he gets the first. Yes, he gets the first down. 23 seconds. And the clock will stop with 22 seconds to go in the first half. The Tigers need to get something cracking here, and Wickersham is calling a timeout. And he'll come over to talk things over with Coach Arn Sparger. And there's the gathering that is taking place. John, though people have talked all year about the problems that Alabama has had, their defense has kept them in a lot of games, but their offense has been the group that has really hurt them. They've not taken advantage of scoring opportunities, but the last three ball games, the tied offense has kind of uh, come back to life, and they've scored a lot of points, but their defense let down somewhat. Tennessee got 28 points against them. They've been allowing other teams to move up and down the field. Here, the defense today has been very aggressive. They've given LSU a lot of problems, and the Tigers only on the initial scoring drive were able to maintain any consistency on offense. And of course, with the rain as it has been off and on, Jeff Wickersham has had some problems, and the basic problems he's had is receivers dropping the ball. Eric Martin dropping a couple. A couple of times, protection broke down, he got sacked, and LSU's been unable to maintain anything on offense. And Wickersham fakes the handoff, throws one down the sidelines, out of bounds, incomplete, with 14 seconds to go, or 18 seconds to go in the half. That and was Herman Fontenot trying to receive that one, but it was thrown uh, off the mark. We have one timeout left. We're one completion away from being in field goal position. Second and ten. Critical situation here because LSU wants to get three points at least before they leave this half. Before the game, Ronald Lewis was kicking field goals 61 yards. We saw him kick a couple from that distance. And Matt DeFrank, I saw him kick one 68. Did I not do Second down at the Alabama 47, Wickersham to throw. He lets it go, and the ball is tipped by Cornelius Bennett, incomplete. That's fourth down now coming up for LSU. Towards the third. Dropping back, Jeff setting up, looking for a man downfield. He might have forced this ball. Matter of fact, he did force the ball. But still, he thought he could get it around that linebacker and into the hands, but got one more chance one more try get a good first down position to kick a field goal in the game uh, with that uh, play just a moment ago was Roger McGee the Tigers really haven't thrown to him yet third down conversions LSU is zero third down and ten long pass down the field it is going to be incomplete at the five yard line bounced around a lot and back up the field. Emmanuel King. Emmanuel just, King was unloading on Jeff Wickersham. He did that. And that's a tough position because it seems like nothing ever happens good with you. Watch Jeff on this one. Hopefully we can see it all the way to the end. Emmanuel King there. Jeff having plenty of time, still looking for someone, but unloads the ball and boom. We'll get to see if uh, if Ronnie Lewis was lucky before the game or if he was for real because he gets to try a pretty good shot here from 64. I a think 64 for real. yard kick coming up and, and now Alabama wants timeout. But now we'll find out if he's lucky. He's for <laughs> real. Now we'll find out if he is lucky. It would be something. <laughs> it would yes. surely be the longest this year and I'm not so sure that it might be the longest in conference history. We'll go to the record books. 14 to 10. Alabama leads LSU. Bama has had two long drives. One 75 yards. 180 yards. A pass got the last six points. Shula DePew and Ricky Moore scored the other time. You, you saw on the scoreboard, John, just then they have a, a symbol showing that there is a tornado warning here. I don't know what that's supposed to tell the fans. Do you, you go down and lie on the field or what do you do? Well, the people on the east side can see it coming from the west side. The people on the east side can see it. LSU scored on a 62 yard drive. Wickersham hit Bottino. Here's Ronnie Lewis, 64 yard try. Going to be way short. Could be a good punt. And 
Time is out in the first half. That's the end of the first half here at Legion Field in Birmingham. A good Southeastern Conference game as the LSU Tigers took an early lead, but Alabama has come back. And here's your halftime score. Alabama leads the LSU Tigers 14 to 10. Discover a little piece of Europe in South Alabama. Here in Mobile, you'll enjoy a breathtaking glimpse into one of the world's most fascinating and tragic love stories. Nicholas and Alexandra, the last imperial family of Tsarist Russia. And while you're here, see a bit of Scottish history come to life too. At Magnolia Grove, part of Alabama's famous Robert Trent Jones Golf Trail. Join us in Mobile for the wealth of an empire and the treasures of a world-class golf trail. It's summer in Mobile, and there's so much to see and do, so many possibilities. And best of all, it's all on sale. A whole season of fun at off-season prices. For a free visitor's guide, call today. With the score, Bama 14, LSU 10. Let's go back to some of the highlights, a few of them at least, of first half action. Here's the first touchdown. This one by LSU at the end of a 62-yard drive. Wickersham to Fontenot. And just a pass out in the flat. And this is a very short, quick LSU drive. And at this point in the game, it looked like LSU would be dominant. Alabama took the ball and came right back down the field, just ran it down the Tigers' throat. Mike Shula with a very important pass here and there converted all the important downs and then Ricky Moore took it in for the tying touchdown and the game kind of seesawed back and forth during the first half hunting really I think played the most important part for both teams Clay Parker kept LSU really in the game and then Mike Shula with an excellent fake to Paul Carruth and then dumped the ball up over the top for the touchdown that put Alabama up 14 to 10 at halftime there you see the first half stats not too impressive Playing conditions are going to be more and more a big part of this game because it rained almost an inch. As you watch the kickoff, there it goes. And the Tigers kick, and here goes Doug Allen with the ball from the Boom. 10, and he is really smacked down just outside the 15, and we have a flag thrown by the referee. It might have been hitting too hard because that was an awful tough a clip against Alabama is the signal given. And so we want to see that hit again if we have a replay on it because it was really something to see. And I think that was a blow delivered by Rob Cutberth, who's been an excellent special teams performer, and you can see why there. This is is pretty good break for LSU. First, they made the tackle deep in Bama territory, and now they get the penalty against Alabama because LSU had to kick off to start this half, and they chose to take the end of the field that gave them the wind advantage in the last quarter. So LSU kicked off into the wind. That's not a great way to start when you're behind, but Alabama ends up with first down on their own nine yard line. So it's worked out at least so far pretty well for the Tigers. Alabama first and 10 at the Bama nine as we start the final 30 minutes of play. Bama with a four point lead and a run by Carruth, Wilson and who else in there to make the tackle? Well, that's enough. He's a big enough man to make a pretty good tackle as he rode the Caruth down to the ground on that one. Paul Ott Caruth, boy, he comes from a lot of genes of Ole Miss people. I tell you, the people in Mississippi hated to see him leave. People all in Osaka, Mississippi. A few of them got away down to LSU, but not very many. John Hazard was that other man on the tackle. And the Moore uh, gain is out to the 12-yard line, and it's second down along seven to go. In motion Richardson. And pitch out goes to Carew. Hazard again, one-on-one. -on -one. Nice tackle. It was a fine tackle. 
And LSU's got the same group starting on the defensive line as started the game. Hazard at the left side, Clapp in the middle, Carl Wilson at the right side. But you can tell that John Hazard's shoulder is, is causing him some problems. And as we've mentioned earlier, he's been ill all week and has not been able to practice very much. So his, his playing is going to be limited, it looks like, during this ball game. Of course, as cool as the weather is and as wet as it is, he certainly is not going to be as tired as he would be otherwise. Third down along five, Bama at its 14-yard line. You saw the stat there on the third down conversions, and here comes Bamo to try it with Ricky Moore to the 20-yard line, and he gets the first down. So Ricky Moore brings Alabama a first down. And it's Bama first and 10 at the tied 20-yard line. You can see how the water has already drained off the middle part of the playing field because of that crown in the middle of it running from goal line to goal line. But we did have a rain here at the halftime. High formation, you notice. Pitch out and way outside at the 21-yard line. A tackle is made by Norman Jefferson of a new player, Chester Braggs, who actually started the game, and you see him limping back to the huddle. Jefferson is also shaken up on the tackle is replaced by Jimmy Pearson and Braggs goes out. I don't know that the Alabama is going to run that anymore. That was kind of an option play to the left. Mike Shula is not their option quarterback for one thing, but he doesn't want to meet Michael Brooks in that situation at the end of the line very much. They need Mike Shula to throw too much. Second and nine Alabama at its 21 and here's that little uh, inside counter and that's Peru barreling up to the 30 yard line. Just shy of it. Hobley makes the tackle with Chapman. And so Carruth turns on the steam. And we look at that one again. Once again, you'll see Mike Shula backing out as opposing to turn and dropping back like a pass. And that is an instant key to know that it's draw. But still, Alabama is a good team. They're able to block it, play well enough to give him about a seven or eight yard game. Third down, less than a yard to go for Alabama, just shy of the Bama 30-yard line. Bama has a four-point lead in the third. First down, Ricky Moore charges out to the 37-yard line. And that's not a good sound when you see your weak safety lifted Hopley coming up and making initial contact about five or six yards down the field. That means that they get through the line almost untouched. If you watch Tommy Clapp on the nose, not getting anywhere. It feels like he's probably in the middle of a pinball machine and he is the ball being bounced around in there. Wasn't able to make the play that time. First down again for Alabama. The tide started back at the Alabama nine yard line. Now Alabama operates from its 37. Whitehurst in motion along the line. That's Ricky Moore to the right. Cager, Walden Cager, number six, who was in on that tackle with a whole bunch of other Tigers. Uh, Moore was never down on the turf. John, he's run very well for a person who's who's sick, as all the other Alabama players who've been ill all week have, have performed exceptionally well. And the tied offensive line is handling LSU's defensive line as they did on their first touchdown drive. In fact, it's the same LSU group in there, and they've been no more successful. Second and five play, Ricky Moore up the middle. He's tackled. About two or three yards. And I see John Hazard in there and Carl Wilson, who's able to penetrate to the inside pretty well. There's Sean Burks. George Enriquez is back in at middle guard and was in on that last play, taking Tommy Class place. As I mentioned, they've been alternating those defensive linemen, but with the injuries that LSU's had to the defensive front, they have not found a group yet that's been able to stop Alabama's running game. Third down and two. Bama at its 45-yard line. Again, Whitehurst in motion. And that's Ricky Moore to the outside. Will he get there this time? He will not. Fourth down and still two to go. And a very fine tackle out there by John Hazard. And John's shoulder is definitely hurting him today. And he's playing with pain, doing a fine job. Hazard is uh, trotting off the field and is favoring that uh, right shoulder. There's Greg Dubrock, who 
Done a fine job so far, and he's going to be replaced. The punt return team is on for LSU. The punt team is on for Alabama. Jefferson for the Tigers is standing back at his 10. And the kicker is Terry Sanders, his average 44 yards. Parker's average in the first half was 46.5. The Tigers try to block it. And they do. And they do block it. Pick it up and go. Don't cover the ball. Pick it up at the 20. And the Tigers are inside the 15-yard line down to the 12-yard line. That a way to go. When you block that punt, the ball is live, and you can pick it up and go with it. And that's the one time in college football you can do that. <laughs> and so that's the time when LSU came up with the big block, and here's a big play in this game. And LSU had a great opportunity to score the touchdown in addition to blocking the punt. Here you see what great penetration, and I believe it was Michael, Michael Brooks, Brooks who made the block. Now you see all the LSU players there, and some of them need to turn back and block Alabama's people. Instead, they all go for the ball. They should have it just outside the 10. From the 12, first down at 10 yards to go, LSU, and there's a little scamper up to about the 10-yard line. I think that's Gary James. It is up under the bottom of the pile, stopped by just about everybody. The first half, they missed an opportunity to score after getting the ball in good field position on an interception. This time, they blocked the punt. We'll see if they can capitalize on this one. I sure hope so. The Tigers are down by four and making a battle of it at the Alabama 10. And here's uh, Dalton Hilliard down to the seven-yard line. And now the Tigers have a turn to turn on the big power. John Hand makes a stop of Dalton Hilliard. But the Tiger ground game, it should be said, has not been... One of the strong points of LSU's game today, only 20 yards in the first half. That might be the first time in years LSU's had only 20 yards and a half running the ball. It has, but they're certainly not thinking about that 20 yards right now. They're thinking about that third down and five and a half yards to get a first down and possibly a touchdown. And Wickersham off to Hilliard. He'll get there. He touchdown. scores. And LSU has taken the lead from Alabama after blocking a punt. And the Tigers lead the Alabama Crimson Tide by 16 to 14. And now they're going for two. That was a very gutsy call because when you call a play like that, Bill Osberg, I guarantee he knew that he was going once again on this straight draw. He was going to go both downs on fourth down because a, a field goal wasn't going to help him with the playing conditions, thinking that this may be your last score. So he went ahead, ran on third down, which he knew he had gained some yards, get him in a better position, and now LSU is lining up to go for two points. And that much maligned defense, which has been bending a good bit during the day to Alabama's power, comes up with the big play, and Michael Brooks blocked the punt. LSU from the 12, and Hilliard scores. Wickersham throws for the two points, and again, the ball is dropped and dropped by, this time, Herman Fontenot. So, the Tigers fail on the two-point conversion. And with 7.53 to go in the third quarter, LSU now leads Alabama by a score of 16 to 14. We have a timeout. We'll be back in a moment. rain we've had high winds we've had even hail at halftime the field in the middle of the field is relatively dry but you'll see water all over the sideline that's going to affect the second half of this ball game now back up to the booth thank you dick we apologize for not having been able to get to you earlier but uh, the situation has just not been dictated and here oh, is here's the a ball and the ball is at the 40 yard line covered by alabama very short kickoff as apparently the frank tried a squib kick and it was knocked down by Alabama and recovered to give Alabama great field position. Matt DeFrank from Fort Walton Beach kicks the ball here. Unfortunately, as that can happen sometimes, it hits one of the head linesmen up there that are sitting up the wall to block. I don't even think he saw the ball coming. Fortunately for Alabama, they were able to fall on the ball and cover it. Preston Gothard had the ball. It's first down for Alabama at the Bama 40-yard line on that strange turn of events. LSU leads by two, and here's a little draw. 
Carew carrying. Picks up pretty good yardage. Up to shy of the 50-yard line. Jeffrey Dale and others make the tackle. Once again, Mike Shula backing out. That's a tip for a draw. LSU knows it also, but it's also a good running play. It's not just a set-up pass draw. This is a play that sometimes they'll pull a guard, trap the end. It's almost like that LSU shovel pass you saw earlier where he just gets the ball inside, good trap play, good counter play, gives it time to develop, and they've made good yards with it all day. Second down, about two and a half to go at the, the Alabama 47-yard line. Moore hit by Dubrock and some help. Gets the first down, though, I think. Just travels over into Tiger territory to the LSU 48-yard line. You're going to see Alabama getting movement at the line of scrimmage. The handoff to Moore, he looks straight over the middle, doesn't see anything initially, but look how far Alabama's line has pushed LSU's defensive line, and it gives Moore opportunity to run. He cut to the left, he picked up more than necessary for the first down. Alabama's ahead in the statistical area. LSU has a two-point lead in the third quarter, and a lot of action to remain. 6.51 to play, Carruth to throw, sideline cut incomplete intended for Greg Payne number six and he was looking for the seam in between Chapman and uh, Jefferson might have had it but the ball was off the mark and that's one of the few times that Mike Shula has missed on those type of passes today he's been very sharp despite the weather conditions Alabama now trailing LSU certainly has to sustain some type of drive but they are in position where a field goal would put them back out in front Seven out of 13 for Shula. Second down, 10 at the LSU 48-yard line. Safety valve man, Gothard has the ball. That's Getchell with it inside the Tiger 40-yard line to the 35. First down at 10 yards to go. That's Ricky Moore, number 26, who gets this one. And, John, this is Moore coming out of the backfield and then cutting straight across the middle. LSU's dropped everyone deeper and has no one assigned to him individually. And Moore is such a tough runner, Alabama is using him a lot more in the passing game than they have in years past because when he gets the ball in the open field, he's tough for one man to bring down. Chapman made the stop. First down at the LSU 35. Moore to carry. Chapman has him in tow again, and Moore picks up two yards. Well, the area of the drain, the part of the field, is uh, increasing in area. So uh, perhaps we'll have a dry field, relatively dry, in uh, 30 minutes or so. I think that's just the difference between pool stage and flood stage, John. <laughs> Could be. Those are just the pools that you see walking away. There's still probably five inches of water underneath the turf. Pain is set widely to the right, Richardson to the left, and you see Shula down under. One remaining back is Ricky Moore. Over the head of Carlos Robinson, number 25. 531 to play in the third quarter. LSU 16, Alabama 14. The Tigers went for two after blocking the punt and scoring. And the two-point drive was a pass to Herman Fontenot, which was not good. A lot of people may wonder why they went for two. Uh, Doug has a great explanation of that in the fact that what does a tie do for LSU? Well, with Florida playing as they are, beating Georgia today, you've got to assume Florida's going to win their remaining game. And LSU, uh, a tie is not going to do any good because LSU's got to maintain victories in the remainder of their games, this and Mississippi State, in order to share the conference lead. So the tie is not going to help LSU, and I think it was a wise choice. Shame that uh, Herman Fontenot didn't make the catch. Third down, eight to go. Shula to throw. A flag and a completion to Clay Whitehurst at the 25 and a half. There's Whitehurst, number 82 from Nashville. That fraction is indicated against Alabama. Here's comes Mr. Harper. Illegal block. And that'll set the Crimson Tide back just a bit. You Drop. see see Shula dropping back here. And George Enriquez, I think, got cut, got the got chop blocked on the left side, and I believe that's what they called it on. LSU has had such serious injuries to the middle guards, and the chop block is one of those blocks that the coaches really particularly with uh, uneven 
defensive front where you have a man head on the center. They're very concerned about it because the guards on both sides have an opportunity if they chop block or block down on the knee of the middle guard to injure him seriously. That block is illegal. However, it happens because there are a lot of people falling out down there. Third and about 22 at the LSU 47. Alabama spreads its backfield. Another flag. No play. Looks like the right guard on offense moved on that one. The umpire gets the call on that one. And so now what happened to LSU earlier in the first half, losing yardage on a possession after an interception is happening to Alabama. That was A.C. Lambert, Jr., the umpire. His father was a longtime football and basketball official in this league from Tupelo, Mississippi. How about that? Well, he's getting a lot of action today, is he not? Yes, he is. So now 27 yards for the first down. Alabama has the ball at its own 48, approximately. Look for the pass play. Robinson is set behind Shula. LSU in a five-man front. The three men come as Shula throws way down the field to the tight end. It's intercepted by Jefferson, and he's going the wrong way, and down he goes at the seven-yard line. Well, I'm not sure that he really wanted to catch, catch that one, but catch it he does, and that's his second interception of the game. LSU has the ball at its seven-yard line. This is better than a punt for Alabama. It's a fine play on Norman Jefferson's part. Getting to the ball. He pretends he's a receiver on that. And oh, had it not been for those long fingers and that stretchy jersey as opposed to the tearaways, he might have made it. Time out of the game. LSU is ahead by 16 to 14. Back to play. Here comes Dalton Hilliard breaking out of there to the 25. Out of bounds at the 33 yard line. And oh, how to get out of a hole. Nothing like giving the ball to Dalton Hillary and break, letting him break one or two tackles, get up field. And that 20 yards rush just went away on that one, didn't it, John? It surely did. And that certainly demonstrates how important the downfield blocking is. Hilliard got pretty good downfield blocking, but if people in the secondary had been knocked down, he would have been able to take it all the way. Excellent play by Alabama's secondary in order to force Hilliard to the sideline. 10 rushes, 58 yards for Dalton Hilliard. First down, the Tigers out there, 33, and Gary James squeezes out about three. As he stops by number 99 for the men from Alabama. And that's a new man in the game, Cliff Thomas at nose guard. Second down and seven yards to go from the 36. LSU in its own territory and ahead by two, 16 to 14. We and have precisely four minutes to play in the third quarter. The worst of the weather seems to move east. We surely hope so. Hilliard dumped in the line by John Hamm. That hand is a hand, isn't he, Bert? <laughs> he is that. He's bigger than a house, too. And he's awful quick. You saw him run down the plays to the sidelines a couple of times. For a big man, he can certainly move. Now, Doug, third down and six from the 38-yard line, LSU. LSU 0 for 7 in this ball game, and of course they'd like to break that string right here. Wickersham to throw. Look out, gentlemen. He has a lot of time. Throws the safety valve guy, and out of bounds with the ball is Raji McGee at the 43-yard line. But John, I don't think he's going to have enough for the first down. LSU has a crossing pattern, and there's McGee on the right side, you see. Wickersham's looking downfield, can't find anybody. He finally hits McGee. But McGee just was not able to get enough of the first down. John Hand with the rush, and not a very aggressive rush here. Looks like they're dancing, and I, I don't know who's the man and who's the woman. <laughs> well, I know one I thing. Know John Hand acts as if he's scared of Lance Smith. Lance Smith has literally handled him all day long. He blocked one pass, and the only reason he blocked that was because Lance Smith had knocked him three or four yards into the defensive secondary. That time, he was so afraid he didn't even come in. And if I were a defensive coach, and I had not told him to do that, and he played like that, he wouldn't be in there very long for me. I tell you, Lance Smith is one of those guys, and you don't hear it very often, but the coaches say that the defensive linemen really fear Lance Smith blocking on, on them because he is such a powerful blocker, and he hurts, and he hurts. Too much time, LSU, as Parker goes back to punt. Now Alabama may try to block Parker's kick. Richardson is up the field. There's Parker's average in the first half, including a bobbled snap. 
Can't do it this time. Line drive kick. Look out on this one as Richardson takes it in at the 13-yard line. And he's going to get nowhere as Kedra comes down the field and really hits him hard. First down going the other way. Alabama has the ball. Time out of the game. Score LSU 16, Alabama 14. Four yard punt by Clay Parker's having a great day booting the ball. Bama from its 18 yard line. Little counter. There's Carew getting to the outside. Dale trying to pull him down has Dubach to come in and help. Carew gets out to about the 28 yard line. Paul out Carew, you can see the ball is almost black. It means it's soaking wet now as you see the water splashing up. Maybe the only advantage I know in artificial turf is that you can maintain pretty good footing even though it is wet. And Dubrock knocks him almost in the next week. Carruth has really run well here today, though, and despite whatever the injury was that he was supposed to have, that he's shown no effects of it. As a matter of fact, this is the best that I've ever seen him run since he injured his knee a couple of years ago. He was out all last year. I wanted to make uh, one comment about Lance Smith, whom we saw dancing there a minute ago uh, with uh, John Hand. That uh, Lance Smith is one of the final 12 people in the running for the uh, Outland Award, which is uh, an outstanding lineman award. Which, which is quite an honor in itself. That means he is regarded as being one of the greatest offensive linemen in the country right now, and I agree with him. He. Uh, is a whole lot more impressive this year than he was last year, Doug. I think that he came back with the right attitude. He came back with a loss in weight, and he came back ready to play. That specifically is the Vince Lombardi Award, which goes to the College Lineman of the Year. From the 28, not quite a first down, second down coming up. Try for it. Robinson gets a first down. He's spun away at the 32-yard line by Sean Burks and by Lippert Hobley. First down, Alabama at the Tide, 32. 217 to play in the third quarter. LSU leads ever so closely, 16 to 14. There's Bill Arnsparker talking to one of the players, uh, and I can't identify him. But he's challenging him, I think. First down and 10 yards to go. The Tide, and it's 32. That's Robinson to the outside. And credit Pearson was turning that ball in as Payne was trying to block Pearson. Pearson just fought it off, and that forced the play to the inside at the 34 is where it ends. And that's a good play by Pearson. On the left of the screen, you'll see he just causes a stalemate, and that makes the ball carrier cut back to the inside because he has nowhere to go, and it gives the pursuit opportunity. John Hazard, number 78, coming in there to make the tackle. Second down from the 34-yard line. Eight to go for Alabama. There's that little play again, and Carruth busts it up the middle to about the 41-yard line. For the first time in some time, even though he's run very well, Carruth really got up ahead of steam on that play. He did it on that. It's the same little delayed play, and what it does enables him the opportunity to look at his linemen and see where they are and make the break off of them, and he saw it to the inside, and he took it. You can call that a halfback draw. It Third was. down and one at the 41 yard line. Almost every second and seven they run it. First down again for Alabama as Carruth just crawls ahead and Bama grinds it out. Just nothing but rock em, sock em football. That's all it is. 38 seconds to go in the first, uh, the third quarter. And credit Michael Brooks with stopping Carruth, and it's first down for Bama at the Alabama 45-yard line. And that's the kind of play, you know, that Coach Bill Arnsbarger would like to be able to stop because Alabama, the, this half, every time they have had the ball, has been able to do that. They've dominated the line of scrimmage. Ray Perk is just running basic, solid football, and the Tigers not able to stop. Richardson is set very widely to the left out of the picture, and Shula will throw. 
A lot of time. Long pass coming to Richardson down the field. Incomplete. Incomplete. Fine coverage by number 27, Kevin Gidry, a freshman from Lake Charles who has played very beautifully this year. He's an outstanding corner. You hear a lot of talk out here in the stands. They feel as if it were pass interference. Watch Mike here. He's got he's back plenty of times. Shula knows what to do with the ball now. He's faking, looking the other way, trying to get the weak safety to come off. And watch Gidry here. There's a little contact, but it looks as if he's going for the ball just as well as the receiver. And it's fair game there. That's correct. Doug, you agree with that? I agree with it. Second down at 10 at the 45-yard line. Back spread, and they're going to pass again, no doubt as Shula gets the snap and retreats to throw. Ah, that's the tight end with the ball. Stopped by Dale. Preston Gothard makes the tackle, uh, the reception at the LSU 45-yard line. Gets another yard. It's first down and 10 yards to go for Bama. And this is a good play by Alabama because LSU had a blitz on, and LSU had people covering Gothard and made good plays, but Shula threw the ball in the perfect place. Gothard kept his eyes on it, made the catch for a big gain in the first down. That's the end of the third quarter here at Legion Field in Birmingham. And on a wet and bleak day, here's your score with 15 minutes to play in the game. LSU 16, Alabama 14. with Baton Rouge Mayor Pat Screen, himself a former LSU quarterback. I guess the bad weather is over with, Pat, but it's still not the best conditions out there. Well, the field's awfully wet, but uh, the game is ours to win. We're two points ahead, and although Bama's driving right now, it's our football game to win. Anything can happen on a field like this, but it's still football. We're about ready to start the last 15 minutes back up to the booth. Thank you. Screen through, I think, 51 passes here on this field one day. Now the mayor of Baton Rouge, first down and 10 at the LSU 44. There's that delay again with Robinson. They got him. Newbrock hauls him in at about the 38. Carlos Robinson, number 25. Another Alabama freshman. It's second down, they say, from the 38-yard line. Four to go for a first down. Alabama's been consistent today in getting six, eight yards on first down. And that's a, key to having a, game. that's a key to having a good drive, too. Anytime you face second and four, life's easy for a quarterback. Robinson is set behind Shula. Robinson has the ball. Not going anywhere. We saw Chapman, number 37, and Enriquez, number 91, is the first on the contact. A word about Enriquez. Uh, George is a sophomore from New Orleans, weighs 220, and really has been getting a taste of action with all of the injuries LSU suffered in the defensive line, and so he's adding to his experience, sort of the way Tommy Clapp has been getting experience this year, and all that experience is valuable. And John, what's really tough for those guys that they're really not middle guards, they're outside linebackers, right. defensive ends, and they get put in that position. That's a tough spot to play. Third and two from the LSU 36, and Shula wants to throw. He's being chased, and he pops it out there incomplete. He threw that one away. Caruth was the man, apparently, as the intended receiver. And I wonder if we will have a try for three points from Tiffin. No, it'll be Sanders to come in. It might have a try for a fake punt here. This is not a bad place to do it. That could be. <laughs> you only have 16 yards a gain if you can't get in the end zone. I think Sanders was a little too anxious to get on the field, so... I think LSU's thinking fake punt. They don't even have anybody deep to receive the punt. I would look for Ricky Moore, number 26, to get the ball. Let's see what happens. Fourth and two at the LSU 36. No, almost snapped it over his head, and Sanders kicks it away from anybody and to the end zone. LSU will have the ball, first and 10 at the Tiger 20. Can you hear how they respond to Ray Perkins' decision to kick? Timeout on the game. Here's your score, LSU by two. 
Discover a little piece of Europe in South Alabama. Here in Mobile, you'll enjoy a breathtaking glimpse into one of the world's most fascinating and tragic love stories. Nicholas and Alexandra, the last imperial family of Tsarist Russia. And while you're here, see a bit of Scottish history come to life, too, at Magnolia Grove, part of Alabama's famous Robert Trent Jones Golf Trail. Join us in Mobile for the wealth of an empire and the treasures of a world-class golf trail. It's summer in Mobile, and there's so much to see and do, so many possibilities. And best of all, it's all on sale. A whole season of fun at off-season prices. For a free visitor's guide, call today. Wickersham to Hilliard. Hilliard. Bounced by hand, but kept away from him for about a three-yard gain. John, it's interesting. LSU two. came out, and as they have many times... Green threw, I think, 51 passes here on this field one day. Now the mayor of Baton Rouge. First down and 10 of the LSU 44. There's that delay again with Robinson. They got him. Newbrock hauls him in at about the 38. Carlos Robinson, number 25, another Alabama freshman. It's second down, they say, from the 38-yard line. Four to go for a first down. Alabama's been consistent today in getting six, eight yards on first down. That's and that's a, a key to having running a, game. that's a key to having a good drive, too. Anytime you face second and four, life's easy for a quarterback. Robinson is set behind Shula. Robinson has the ball. Not going anywhere. We saw Chapman, number 37, and Enriquez, number 91, is the first on the contact. Word about Enriquez, uh, George is a sophomore from New Orleans, weighs 220, and really has been getting a taste of action with all of the injuries LSU suffered in the defensive line, and so he's adding to his experience. Sort of the way Tommy Clapp has been getting experience this year, and all that experience is valuable. And John, what's really tough for those guys is that they're really not middle guards. They're outside linebackers, right. defensive ends, and they get put in that position. That's a tough spot to play. Third and two from the LSU 36, and Shula wants to throw. He's being chased, and he pops it out there incomplete. He threw that one away. Karuf was the man, apparently, as the intended receiver. And I wonder if we will have a try for three points from Tiffin. No, it'll be Sanders to come in. It might have a try for a fake punt here. This is not a bad place to do it. That could be. <laughs> you only have 16 yards a gain if you get it in the end zone. I think Sanders was a little too anxious to get on the field, so. I think LSU's thinking fake punt. They don't even have anybody deep to receive the punt. I would look for Ricky Moore, number 26, to get the ball. Let's see what happens. Fourth and two at the LSU 36. No, almost snapped it over his head, and Sanders kicks it away from anybody and to the end zone. LSU will have the ball, first and 10 at the Tiger 20. And you hear how they respond to Ray Perkins' decision to kick. Timeout on the game. Here's your score, LSU by two. Wickersham to Hilliard. Bounced by hand, but gets away from him for about a three-yard gain. John, it's interesting. LSU came out, and as they have many times in this ballgame with two tight ends, and Alabama normally defensively will shift their line one way or the other, shift their linebackers one way or the other. That time they were overshifted, although LSU had two tight ends. And I don't know that Alabama intended to overshift because the Tigers on the left side were strong and could have just run for 15 yards, but the play was called up the middle in very small game. Cornelius Bennett sort of halfway pulls in Dalton Hilliard. 
who on a second down and about seven gets about six yards. 12-40 to play in the game. LSU clings to a two-point lead. And these are really important plays. LSU, I believe, is 0 for 8 on third down conversions or third down attempted conversions in this ball game. Here they have another one, third and one, and really desperately need to keep the football. From the Tiger 29-yard line, Alabama girds for the running play, and here it is. That is Jerry James. He stopped before he gets there, and credit Cliff Thomas, the nose guard, for sufficient penetration. They unravel, and LSU is shy of the 30-yard line. The Tigers will have to punt. And here's why James did not make the first down. Not only penetration, but the whole Alabama defense was ready for that one. Parker stands back at the 15-yard line, waiting for the snap. Up the field, Greg Richardson. Parker so far has had a great day punting the ball. Has the advantage of the wind, which has dissipated somewhat, by the way. Gets a kick away. It's not as long as the others, and Richardson takes it in at the 27. Fumbles the ball and has to pounce on it inside the 30. So Alabama improves its field position a little bit. But it's Bama's ball. With timeout, LSU has a two-point lead. Alabama works now from its 27. The ball goes back and forth. LSU clings to a 16-14 lead in the final quarter. There's Carruth. Got in the seam, which was on its way to being blocked by Carl Wilson, and he got off balance. Picks up about five or six yards again. Carruth is a little bit slow getting up, leaving the game now. From the 33-yard line, that's a six-yard gain, second down, and a little more than four yards to go. That's Carruth hobbling off. He is replaced by Thornton Chandler, who's come on. Robinson, the lone remaining back, that means that Alabama has an extra receiver on the field. In motion, Payne. Pitch back to Robinson. Here he comes. Maybe a first down. Hazard and Chapman. I'll tell you that, that Hazard is putting everything he has on the line, isn't he? He's As doing that. Alabama. Shoulder. First down, Bama at the tied 38-yard line. This is the same kind of problem LSU faced in the Notre Dame game and in the first game against the University of Florida on the tying drive at the first contact of the year. So the Tigers have to find some way to avoid breaking but stop the Alabama Crimson Tide's running game. Shula to throw, chased out of the pocket, has to run. Fumble! That's the way you stop it. First down, LSU. They're going to call Shula with the ball at the 43-yard line. That may bring Archbarger on the field. Well, I tell you, John, that should bring him on the field. Now, that's the second time in this ball game. Early in the ball game, remember, Carruth fumbled the ball. The official called it down, although clearly the ball was fumbled before he went down. This time, it, it seemed clear that on the way down. Let's see if we can see. Shula gets pressured first. Michael Brooks in the backfield was not able to get to him. Shula escapes, comes, and on his way down, the ball is gone. That's clearly a, fumble. a fumble. That's clearly a fumble. It's second down. And down again. Another fumble, and Alabama's Robinson pounces on it. Back at the 40-yard line, it's third down and nine. That was just absolutely a <laughs> terrible call. Well, you know, the funny thing about it, is it runs through the Shula family. They always get their calls their way. Don Shula, of course, is the head of the rules committee in the National Football League, so you know they're never going to call the real penalties on him. And I guess it's genetic. They just get their breaks coming all the way down. But Mike Shula comes for great genes. He's a, a fine player and doing a good job today, and he was very fortunate on that play for not being called for a fumble. Well, you can clear. see how wet the ball is. 
Third down and nine at the 40-yard line. Shooter to throw. Hits uh, Richardson, who's down to the 50-yard line for a first down. That keeps the drive going, and that shows you Jefferson makes the tackle. How important that uh, decision back up the field really was. And here's Shula. LSU is spread out. Preston Gothard clears out the middle. And Richardson just has an opportunity to get in front of Jefferson on the right side. Shula pops the ball in there right where it belongs for the first down. But that was a big opportunity for LSU having Alabama in a sure pass situation. But the Tigers have got to come up with a big defensive play and have not been able to do it this half. LSU leads 16-14 with 8.45 to play in the game. Bama with a first down at midfield. Robinson by Chapman at the Tiger 43 yard line. That is a seven yard game on first down. Each time, here's just a quick pick out to Robinson. He's just following his blockers here. Good surge by the offensive line. Stops, cuts back, and seven yards is nothing like second and four and second and three for a quarterback. It sure makes his job easy. Here's the second down play. To the Tiger 39. That'll be close for a first down. 7.50 to play in the game. We're halfway through the final quarter then with the Tigers on top 16 to 14, and the officials are calling for time for a first down measurement. Let's take time out here with 7.47 to play in the game. LSU leads 16 to 14. Measurement shows not quite a first down. Third down at the LSU 40. And a quarterback sneak by Mike Shula brings the first down for Alabama to the Tiger 38-yard line. And with these long drives on the ground, LSU, or Alabama is eating up the clock, and the clock is going to be critical for LSU if they happen to score. And remember, in the first half, the time was split pretty much 2-1 to one in favor of Alabama. Right at 20 minutes possession for the Crimson Tide, 10 for LSU. In this half, I'm sure the ratio is even greater. Alabama's field goal kicker is one out of two from 50 yards and out. Robinson cutting back inside the 35 and again Alabama picks up six or seven yards on first down and once again it makes the quarterback's job easy and they're being able to do that because they're controlling the line of scrimmage they're just a strong offensive line Alabama has always had talent and this is no exception Sean Burks made the stop there Robinson at the LSU 32 it's second down four yards to go for Bama Tigers cling to a two-point lead. Robinson again. Slips through Toby Caston's hands for a loss and gets to the 30-yard line. John, there's another thing that's caused LSU problems this half, and that is poor tackling. They have stacked up oftentimes plays at the line of scrimmage, and a runner would cut back inside of the hole, and one of the pursuing players would come over, have a good shot at him, and miss the tackle or slide off and be drugged for four or five yards. Here's Van Tiffen, who is an outstanding field goal kicker, and you know he would prefer that the Tide score a touchdown, but he's the type of player who can make that field goal when it's necessary. Richardson in motion. The Tigers are offside, and Robinson runs, but the play is called dead, and so we're going to have a five-yard assessment, no doubt, against LSU. Or would it be uh, driving had, the other team offside? Might have had some movement in the right side of the Alabama offensive line, John. I think the right tackle. Alabama is going to pick up the five yards, so that'll change the complexion of things. Well, after the bad call back up the field by these officials uh, on that fumble, the Tigers will do one or two. Let's go down to Dick Walcott on the field. 
just had an opportunity to go on the other side of the field and talk with Joe Namath here with his uh, lovely brand new bride. He apologized to all the fans for not being able to come over here in camera range and talk it, but he says he's trying to get the tide to come through from this two-point deficit. Now back upstairs to the game. Third and seven. Here's a pass. Shula throws. Oh. It's incomplete. A possible interception, but it would have been a tough one for Norman Jefferson. The pass intended for number 17, Greg Richardson. Now, let's see what happens here. The ball is just inside the 35. It's fourth down and seven yards to go for Alabama. Timeout, Alabama. So now the decision is whether to go for three points or whether to go for the first down. The Miami. He announced that Maryland won, but I don't think that's right because Miami was bleeding by a lot. that was supposed to come through at mid-game has come through now. It's getting appreciably colder down here on the field. The wind is still blowing, it seems like, out of the south, so you would think the cold front has not yet come through. The wind was a big factor in the ball game and has been throughout the contest, especially in the first half. Wet field is drying up a little bit, but we've only got about five and a half minutes to play. Back up for more action. A 51-yard field goal try by Van Tiffen. He's one out of two, 50 yards and over. Three out of four, up to 49 yards. Abney will hold a 51-yard field goal try coming right here. Too short. Not good. LSU's lead will remain 16 to 14, and the ball comes back to the point of the down. And the Tigers will put the ball in play just shy of the 35. LSU's lead remains at two points. John, LSU has this game in their hands now. If they can keep it in drive for the first down, they have an opportunity, but they will not be able to do it that way. Gary James off right tackle for absolutely nothing. And LSU has really been stymied this half. Alabama's had the ball almost the entire time, and uh, the Tigers just have not been able to move deep into Bama territory. Dalton Hilliard back in the game. Wickersham is trying to get a signal from the sideline. Doesn't look like He's really quite sure what they want him to do, but it's important that they make that decision, get up to the line of scrimmage, and gain some yardage. Seven seconds to the time between plays, and here is a pass out here to Martin. He catches one to the 45-yard line, first, first down. Well, Martin has missed a couple of crucial ones today, but he catches this one and picks up a big first down for LSU. And the good ones always find a way to come back, and Eric Martin certainly is a fine receiver, the best receiver as far as the records go in LSU history, and you can see why he is. He can, he's got sure hands. He's missed two today, and I think they're the first two I've seen him miss in years. And another great one, Roger McGee is out there right now, and is set off to the right side. Running play, though. Hilliard breaks off to the left, picks up about five yards. LSU had two tight ends in the game on that run. Andrews and Curtis. And John, that was only five yards, but that particular play is the best blocking LSU's offensive line has done in an awful long time. They just moved Alabama's defense back from the line of scrimmage. In fact, he might have picked up slightly over five, but the important thing is it looks like the Tigers realize that they have the game in their own hands. 4-10 to play in the game. Running play, Hilliard smacked down at the 49-yard line. And it is going to be third down coming for the Tigers. Credit the tackle to linebacker Wayne Davis. LSU faces a possession down here that is very important. And third down has been their nemesis today because they, I don't think they picked up a third down conversion as yet. Have they done? And it's this third is down at about uh, four, I think, Bert, from the, LA, from the Alabama 49-yard line. LSU with a big possession down here and will pass. Right up the middle, Andrews drops the ball. It's fourth down. LSU with 3.33 to go in the game. And that was a big down. 
And John, here you would expect that Alabama may come after Clay Parker. Remember, they got one last year and scored a touchdown off of it. Cornelius Bennett. Jeff. Here you're going to see Jeff stepping back. Mitch Andrews is in the middle short. He hits him with the pass, and he gets hit immediately thereafter, but should have caught that football for the first down. Cornelius Bennett was harassing him, and here's Parker's punt. Gets it away. Nice spiral. What a day kicking the ball he's had. To the goal line on the fly. 49-yard kick for him. And so Alabama will take over at the Bama 20-yard line. The wind is blowing in Birmingham. And you see there what Van Tiffen was kicking into a little while ago. 51 yards a long way for a field goal. And that is, of course, to LSU's benefit because Alabama's got to get pretty close in order to give Tiffin a good opportunity to win this ball game for them. LSU, on the other hand, remember, has not been able to stop Alabama's, Alabama's marching this half, and the Tide's got 3 minutes, 25 seconds to take it down close enough for the win. Another Southeastern Conference game of the old variety. The Tigers lead by two, and here's a draw play. Short gain on first down. And this time, LSU stopped that draw play. They haven't done it very well or successfully all game. But Ricky Moore time. carried it that time, too, Bert. He's back in after suffering a minor injury earlier. The Tigers have another nickel back in the game. That's Pearson, and Dubrock comes off. Second down, eight yards to go from the Alabama 22-yard line. LSU clings to a two-point lead, Shuler to throw. Here it goes. It is out there. Dropped. A little hanging quail out there, and uh, that was intended for Gothard. The ball ended up around his ankles, and it was tough to catch, but it was a catchable ball. It was catchable, but that's an awful long way to throw the ball for a short completion. Alabama had two tight ends here. Gothard was lined up on the left and slanted out into the left flat. But look how far Shula had to throw the ball. It was thrown low, but gosh, LSU had Jeffrey Dale close enough to make the interception almost, and that's a very, very... A uh, tough pass to complete considering the consequences. You got one like that last week. Like it last week, yes, so Third down, eight to go for Alabama. The Tide at its 22, spread formation, two throw, and he won't get it away this time, and he's down shy of the 25-yard line. And now, in the crucial moments, the LSU defense comes to the forefront. 2.35 to play in the game. There they are, Wilson, and here's the play again. Rush. Mike just looking for somewhere to go. Can't find anything. Michael Brooks coming in. No Michael place to Brooks. go with the ball. Running or passing. Timeout Alabama with 2.23 to play in the game. And oh. LSU striving to remain unbeaten in league play. Well, you can see the weather has improved some, Bert. It Doug? has improved. It looks like it's helping the Alabama fans leave the stadium. They're not having to put their umbrellas up. It seems like half the crowd is leaving now, feeling as if Alabama has lost this game. But well, man, Alabama's going to go for it. But an interesting thing, they apparently were going to. We're going to go down to Dick and we'll see what Dick sees about the decision made by Ray Perkins. LSU Tigers holding a two-point lead, two and a half minutes or 2:23 left to go in the ball game. The fans who stayed around through the wind and the rain and the hail are starting to file out right now as uh, LSU held on a uh, third down situation, holding Alabama and take over the football. However, the game is not over as yet. You can believe that. Now back up to the booth for the final two minutes, 23 seconds. It's fourth down for Alabama at the Alabama 24-yard line. And, John, the interesting thing I was talking about is that Ray Perkins sent in his punting team, and then he let time run off the clock, and then he called a timeout. Now, Alabama now has one timeout left. They apparently, with Mike Shula in the game, are going to go for it on fourth down, which really is about the only thing they could have done initially. But in the process, they cost themselves about 20 seconds off of the clock. And a timeout. 2.23 to play. Here's a big down. This may be the whole game right here in motion. Richardson. Shula needs six yards for the first down. Incomplete. Incomplete. In fact, almost intercepted by Norma Jefferson. The LSU Tigers take over at the Alabama 24-yard line. And this could be the final gasp in the game for the University of Alabama with 2.18 to play. This is not a good position to be in as a quarterback. Fourth and six, fourth and seven, no time. 
just trying to get the ball up field. And it wasn't far off. He almost came up with the catch. From the Alabama 24-yard line, LSU first down. Hilliard off left guard, short yardage to about the 23. 2-12 to go in this game, and the clock has stopped for some reason. Timeout Alabama. Here's the signal now. There he is. Brickersham is coming to the sidelines, and there's the scoreboard. 16 to 14, the Tigers are leading by just a scant margin. Doug, if you were the coach with two minutes and 50 seconds left, you had two timeouts left in the game, would you have called timeout there and gone for fourth down that far back in, in your own territory, almost conceding the game if you did not make the play? I don't think I would have done it. I believe I would have, not the second, I guess I am second guessing. But as you see Bill Osberger sitting there talking about what they're gonna do this next time, there's Ray Perkins saying, it was my call, that's what I would have done. But I believe I would have gone ahead and kicked the ball, tried to stop them. They've had pretty good success on defense thus far in the game with the exception of two drives by LSU, and then you had a chance. Well, I'll tell you, the tough thing with Ray Perkins is that people are going to be asking him, why didn't you make that decision ahead of time and let that time run off the clock? If you're going to call the timeout, call it immediately and save us the, the seconds. But he's under fire and has been under fire all season here. Uh, LSU with an opportunity to win the ball game, and Jeff Wickersham handing the ball off on the reverse to Herman Fontenot, Cornelius Bennett, with a great play, and of course, he's a player who is capable of that. LSU using that play for the first time this game, a little a, a counter reverse, I guess, is what you would call it. And uh, there's tough ball handling involved, but with Alabama's pursuit, you saw the fake handoff, the hand back to Fontenot. Bennett was in the backfield. LSU fortunate to get away only with the loss rather than a fumble recovery. But the clock continues to run. There's nothing Alabama can do about it now. A minute 35 to go in the game. LSU will take all the time the Tigers want to take and use, no doubt, wide plays in order to consume a lot of time on the clock. LSU apparently on its way to another conference victory. Here's a run to the right as Hilliard is not going anywhere with this one. Six one and one, the Tiger record coming into this game. And there's the old, it looks like he's hurt. It's been down on the ground there. Well, Cornelius Bennett is down on the ground. However, Alabama also is out of timeouts. And that's Cornelius I, may be trying to figure out a way to get them to stop the clock. Well, I hope that's the case and hope that he's not injured too severely. But we used to do that a great deal. Uh, and finally, they instituted a rule in the National Football League that even if you were hurt and down, after they got you off, they ran, I think it was 15 seconds off the clock after you were down to keep this from happening. But I think he's down legitimately and he has hurt. Looking ahead at the schedule, Alabama has Cincinnati to play next week in a non-conference game. And then the tide ends up with uh, Auburn on December the 1st. And here's the way that injury occurred with to Cornelius Bennett, number 97. He just got caught up in the melee there. That was wow. a fine player. He was an outstanding freshman a year ago and led the Alabama Crimson Tide defense. In fact, was a big cog in the victory by Alabama over LSU last year at Baton Rouge. Let's go to Dick Walcott on the field. Injured player Cornelius Bennett, the All-American linebacker from Alabama. He was questionable before the ball game. Looks like he injured that shoulder again. He's helped from the ball uh, from the field. So less than a minute to go. Back up to the booth. And John, it looks like LSU is going to go ahead and let that clock run down, take the five-yard penalty. Clay Parker is in there. 50 that's seconds. Gonna, that's going to run it down to about 45. Now they can't do that again. Looking ahead at the schedule, LSU plays at Starkville, Mississippi against Mississippi State next week. And then Tulane at Tiger Stadium the night of November 24th. Five-yard penalty has stepped off against LSU. The Tigers are moving their record to 4-0-1 in the conference, tied with Florida for the conference lead as Florida beat Georgia today. And you think they're coming after this one? <laughs> All 11 men, well, 10 men on the line, and Parker does kick the ball. The ball is on the way to the end zone. And so Alabama has 39 seconds left on the scoreboard clock to do something very, very big. It will take a big thing. 
this late in the game. 16 to 14, LSU leads Alabama. And the Crimson Tide starts from its 20-yard line with 39 seconds left to go. But, John, things like that can happen. You know, LSU Did twice in this quarter has had the opportunity to keep the ball, run the clock out, and win the game. And they keep giving it back to Alabama. And when that happens, sometimes bad things happen to you. Mike Shula is back to throw, throws one up the field. It is going to be incomplete. He got the ball to the man, but it's just a little bit off the mark. At the tight end. Ed Pugh caught the touchdown pass, the first one of the day uh, for Alabama. Like there. That was not far from being a touchdown. And they're only two points behind. And they're only two down. One. 34 seconds left to play in the game. Alabama has a little more time. LSU did not get the first down on its possession. Bama now is really trying to pull every bag from the bottom of its bag of tricks. And Shula goes back to throw again. Got to run this time. This could be it up to the 25-yard line. 25 seconds left to go in the game. Alabama has no timeouts. Remember, the clock is moving at 20 seconds. 19, 17, 15, 13, 12. And here is Shula back to throw again. Up the field, it's going to be incomplete. Almost intercepted by Norman Jefferson with six seconds left on the scoreboard clock. But John almost caught also by Greg Richardson, number 17. Last week against Mississippi State, he caught a long pass for a touchdown at near the end of the game to win it 24 to 20 on a play very similar to that. He was covered. The Mississippi State defender knocked the ball up in the air and hit Richardson twice, bounced off his helmet. Finally, he caught it, ran it in for a touchdown. That's the kind of thing that can happen here, although there's only time for one more play. Six seconds left to play. LSU has a two-point lead. Shula for Alabama back to throw. Throws a long one. It's going to be intercepted by Hobley. He's got it. He's running this way inside the 25. He's coming to the 30. This is LSU's victory today. And he steps off the field as the gun sounds to end the game. And the LSU Tigers have defeated the Alabama Crimson Tide for the second time. In the last few years, the last victory by the Tigers came in 1982, then a loss last year at Baton Rouge to Alabama, and now the Tigers come up with another victory over the Crimson Tide today, and LSU remains unbeaten in Southeastern Conference play with one conference game remaining against Mississippi State next week. Bert? They certainly do, and you saw Ray Perkins walking off the field. That ensures the fact that he will have a losing season. I know it's disappointing to him. It's a great win. Anytime LSU can beat Alabama at Alabama or Alabama at all, it seems like in the last few years, it's just something to be had. We'll be back to summarize today's game in just a minute. The final score, 16-14, LSU defeats Alabama.